Shalom Chabrim. I'm Steve Bernoon. You're watching Israeli News Live and going to be a short broadcast, friends, having some internet difficulties this evening, but uh, wanted to bring something to you here. Uh, this was shared with me uh, by a close friend, won't call any names, but uh, Mark Biltz, uh talking in this video here, the title of it, Special Habadal, Habadalah Service and World Release with Pastor Biltz, Decoding the Prophet Jeremiah. Uh, when you get to one hour, three minutes, uh, you might want to start it at 30 seconds. I'm going to begin it at 42 seconds. Mark goes into the, the corona or the crown. Uh, of course, he's, called, he's got this sign up here on the God's purpose for the coronavirus. Uh, but he's going to get into Gometria and going to compare Gometria and the seven Noahide laws with a cometric value of the word crown or keter in Hebrew. Uh, and how that they work together. Well, the odd thing is, is if those of you that remembered this video here, I shared with you a little while back with uh, Yitzhak Shapira on his uh, particular channel, just the opposite. Uh, he's blasting the Noahide laws because they're uh, taking believers away from Yeshua. Well, I was glad to see he was blasting it, but it seems like what are these guys not on the same page or what? Anyway, listen, listen in real quick. I want you to hear what they have to say for yourselves. With God's advice to the king and the queen. It says in Jeremiah 13, 18, Say to the king and the queen mother, Humble yourselves. Sit down, for your principalities are coming down, even the crown of your glory. Wow, what a great pride the king has that wears the crown. And God says, even the crown of your glory is coming down. Now, one thing that I'm probably sure that Rabbi Shapira has mentioned, but I'll just bring it up. The Hebrew word for crown has a numerical value of 620. Well, uh, it so happens that there are 613 misquotes that were given to Israel. And then you have the seven Noahide laws that totals. 620 laws that were given to mankind by the king of the universe. Uh, well, guess what? That's also the same numerical value for the coronavirus. Uh, and so, and corona comes from the word crown, or the crown comes from the word corona, the Latin word for crown. So I thought that was interesting that who is going to be the king? Are we going to sit as king on the throne, or are we going to allow God to sit on the throne? Well, there it is. Again, promoting seven Noahide laws, 613 mitzvot, as he calls it there, uh, or the Levitical laws. And I'm going to discuss that in just a moment here with you. But before I do, I want to play Yitzhak Shapiro, what he was saying back December 9th, 2019, about the seven Noahide laws. And, and you just can't help but wonder, all right, because Mark is saying, you know, he's bringing uh, Yitzhak Shapiro into this. Uh, but, well, hey, who knows? Maybe Shapira supports the Noahide laws, but uh, at least he wasn't doing it when it came to India because it was taking away uh, believers over there. And I appreciated the fact that he stood against the Noahide laws then. But just listen in, because these two men, and of course, Bilt is supposed to be a student under Shapira. Uh, and also it's kind of interesting because Shapira was saying, even before this particular video here, how that all Christians needed to go up underneath the rabbis uh, in Israel. Uh, because that was what he claims that they're supposed to do. You know, Jesus called the Pharisee uh, rabbis a bunch of serpents and vipers and said their father was the devil, and yet the rabbis of today, the Orthodox rabbis, claim to be the sentence of the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago. I would not want to go underneath someone that Jesus considers to be a devil, period. And, of course, Shapira also made the statement that Jesus would straighten it out when he came. Right? Oh, please, come on. Listen in to this here then. And then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Melchizedek out of the book of Hebrews uh, versus Melchizedek priesthood versus Levitical law. A rabbi, a very famous rabbi. I'm not going to give his name. He is not a messianic rabbi. He is an orthodox rabbi from the land of Israel. He started to come here and to tell believers that Yeshua is not the Messiah. Right here, around the corner of where we are staying. As a result of that, 
close to 1,000 people, this is the estimate right now, renounced Yeshua and converted. They're in various area of conversion right now. Very, very stages converted into Messiah, into Orthodox Judaism, into Judaism, renouncing Yeshua. And now this teaching is being spread out all throughout the land here in India. They are in a process of building three other centers like this in India. They call those centers Noachite centers, where they so-called start to teach Gentiles about the seven mitzvot Bnei Noach, and then they go and they teach against Messiah and cause the Messiah to be renounced by the people. I want you to understand the significance of what is happening here. We're talking about thousand souls who lost their faith in Yeshua. You wonder how it's happened. How can something like that take place? Well, I, I hate to say it, but uh, uh, Yitzhak Shapira, it happens because you have been preaching that the people must go underneath the Talmudic rabbis in Israel. I appreciate the fact that you went against the Noahide laws in this particular case. And of course, you asked the people in the same video for $20,000 to help combat this. Uh, no, what we need is sound doctrinal gospel of Jesus Christ. That's how you deal with the issue here, not continuing in more garbage. All right, so let's take a quick look. I want to take you over to uh, Hebrews chapter 7. And of course, the book of Hebrews is specifically designed to speak to the Jewish people. But uh, we're going to take a, a closer look in the book of Hebrews at chapter 7, just as a reminder of, you know, because Mark Bills is talking about the 613 that's vote for uh, uh, that were written for the Jews and the, and the seven Noahide laws for the Gentiles. Uh, so, you know, Mark's definitely endorsing all of this, uh, and but just completely, completely false. It was, you know, there is a new covenant, and that new covenant is what we are under now. Let's go down to verse 11, and just to kind of pick up right there. Therefore, perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron? Think about it. If it's really so perfected to come out of Levitical law, then there was no need for another priest. And remember, Psalms 104 is where David wrote about it, that thou art, a, that thou art a priest after the order of Melchizedek. There was another priest line coming. Even the Kumarnites could see that. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of a necessity a change also of the law. I mean, look, who, who, do, you, do you really think that Mark and, 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 and Shapira are supposed to be smarter than the writer of the book of Hebrews? For the priesthood being changed, there is made of a necessity a change also of the law. For he whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning the priesthood. All right? And is yet far more evident, for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there ariseth another priest, who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of, in, of an endless life. For he testifieth, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. That's from Psalm 104. Okay. For there is verily a disannulling of the commandment going before the weakness and unprofitableness thereof. For the law made nothing perfect, 
but the bringing in of a, of a better hope did, by the which we draw nigh unto God. And insomuch as not without an oath he was made a priest, for these priests were made without, without an oath, but this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and will not repent, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. All right, now, and there was one other part I wanted to share with you guys. Let me just see if I can find it quickly here. Um, eh, looks like I might be getting down to it. So let me just keep going here. By so much was Jesus made surety for a better testament. And truly there were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by the reason of death. But this man, because he continueth ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore he is able also to save them that... Uh, the, the utmost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Okay? For such an high priest became us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice or for first his own sins and then after for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. Now there is one other part I've got to get to. Let me just find it real quick because I was going through all of these passages here and was just really taken by some of these. And it's just hard for me to see with these glasses. So, For if the first covenant had, had been faultless, then should... Uh, no place have been sought for the second. All right. That's interesting. For if that first covenant, which is a 613 mitzvot, had been faultless, then should there should no place have been sought for the second. You know, even Jesus challenges the 613 mitzvot. Like when he says, you've heard it said for an eye, those that say uh, for an eye for an eye and an ear for an ear. But I say unto you, you know, if, the, if he compels you to go a mile, go with him twain, etc. If he smites you on the face, give him your, your cheek, give him the other cheek. Go on, watch what it says. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them out of the uh, hand by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, but because they continued not in my covenant, I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. That's nothing to do with uh, 613 mitzvot. And they, shall teach, and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, and for uh, all shall know me from the least to the greatest. That's exactly the way it is today. Everybody knows who Jesus Christ is. Everyone knows that his, his yoke was easy, his burden was light, right? There's nobody having to go down to these little uh, yeshivas to have to study, 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 and memorize all these 613 misvot and all the Torah, oral law, and, and Talmud, and things like that. There's no need in that. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities, who I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant he hath made, the first is old now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. All right, that's still the one I'm not looking for. Hang on one second. That, that's good, too. It's very important. But there's one where he talks about the covenant, but it's to both the house of Judah and the house of Israel. And it's right in here. So just bear with me one moment. Okay. Actually, I'd already read it just a moment ago, but let's go back to it here again. It is in Hebrews chapter 8. All right. Let me, let me verse 7. Let's start there. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, and saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. All right? He's making a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now, many of these leaders today are trying to make it look like that's not been done yet. But the book of Hebrews is showing it was already fulfilled. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them out, uh, by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant and regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant 
that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. All right. Now, if you go and look, and I'll just try to keep both open. My internet's not doing that great, but I'll just try to keep them both open real quick. Let's go quickly to the book of Acts. Right? Book of Acts, chapter 2. Because that new covenant, when Christ raised from the dead, he poured out his spirit upon the believers. He told them to wait until they were in due from on high. All right? Wait till they were endued from power from on high. And then what happened? On the day of Pentecost, right? It says here, and there appeared in them cloven tongues like as of a fire set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay? That's, that's, the, that's the house of Judah right there. The Russian mighty wind comes down, fills all the house, right? But then it says here, and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. That's actually Judeans in Greek. Not Jews, Judeans. Now this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because every man heard them speak in their own their own language. They didn't speak, they didn't speak Hebrew, they didn't speak Greek, they weren't speaking. Uh, Aramaic, whatever people thought they were speaking over there at that time. But they come out. They said, are not all these Galileans that speak? But these were from where? Perithians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia. Right? All the known world at that time. Egypt, Libya, Cyrene, strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. So they were Jews and Gentiles that had been converted. And that's actually Judeans, not Jews. Cretes, Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So the miracle was that they were hearing in their own language. All right. Now, if you go down, I think around verse 36, we find out who these are. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. They heard When they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, to your children and to that that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So the house of Israel was gathered in Jerusalem on that day, and they believed. They fulfilled what we were just looking at over here, where it's both a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. All fulfilled. So all this stuff that Mark built and and Shapira talk about and Mark saying that, you know, that 613 misvote applies to the Jews and seven Noahide laws for the, for the, for the, for the Christians. Nonsense. It's not biblical. It's not sound gospel. We need the gospel of Jesus Christ in this day and not all this phony baloney that they've got. It really, it just makes me sick. Ay, ay, ay. Let me see if I can find that video for you real quick. If I can, I'll try to share it with you. If not, uh, tomorrow we try to get our internet. When it's weather clears up, we'll be able to share it then. Let me just take it. Un unfortunately, unable to pull that, that video up there. So I apologize for that. Uh, wonderful friend sent that to us. We will definitely try to get that and share that with you guys tomorrow. Uh, don't forget. And, you know, like I said, we are certainly living in a tumultuous time, but we do thank you for your support of this ministry. Um, it's very difficult for us right now. We're unable, of course, to be in our own home uh, because of certain issues that we have to face uh, as a ministry, but we are still doing everything we can to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to you and the, and the truth as we go along. So if you want to support the work we do, IsraeliNewsLive.org. 
you can donate online just buy right here donate online click here we do have our address uh, it'd be better if you could do it online it makes it a little bit more difficult right now to uh, get to our mail but we have options if we need to do that maybe once a month or something like that so we thank you for your support and your kindness to this ministry i'm stephen benoon with israeli news live good evening